Hello and welcome to my extremely low effort micro talk about these this game buzzer system that I made. It's if you're into DIY stuff, maybe you'll find this interesting. If you're not, I'm sorry. Uh, this is what it looks like. And the reason I made it is my wife was on Amazon looking at these and I said, oh, no, no, not like this. I can make a better buzzer system. These are not even connected. So if you buy six of these, you don't really know who was first. Let me make mine. And she's used to me saying stuff like that and then never doing it, but this time I did it. Here is what is required, this list of stuff. Uh, a lot of this is overkill, and I didn't really need it, like HDMI video, which I don't end up using, but in the future, someday, that could be useful. So it's a requirement. I decided to go with the Raspberry Pi, which is a small $50 Linux computer. It's, uh, I use these a lot. The downside to using this instead of, say, an Arduino or an ESP32, you know, or other small c computers like that, is kind of, it's slow to boot. You don't get instant boot, but it can do much more. Hope you like my art. Let's move on. So the first thing you need to know is to read from a button, we need this, a pin, a GPIO, general purpose input output pin. And the Raspberry Pi has lots of those. I think 26 can be used that way. Oh, it even says it right there. Look at that. That proves it. I'm not lying. I'm not a witch. Uh, then you connect with these. Well, if this had the, uh, the other end, looks more like, but you usually you, you plug those, what are they called? DuPont wires in, but they always fall out. So that is not what I'm going to do. Um, instead I'm using this other thing, which I see, I lost the picture of this thing. Uh, I know what I'm doing here. Okay, this, see this? This is a, I think it's called a Raspberry Cobbler. Oh, there we go, T Cobbler Plus. And it's for an old Pi, but it, so these pins are wrong, but it uh, worked fine. So I soldered that in and the other ribbon end, which you can't even see, that plugs directly into those uh, pins here. So the nothing falls out, everything is soldered. It's just a little more durable than usual. And then for each controller, I'm using these JCT plugs, which is not a great idea, but they work. Mm, I guess that's from the back. For the buttons, I'm using these AliExpress 60 millimeter buttons. So the way these buttons work is you put them together and they have a total of four, what do you call these, contacts? Two for the switch and two for the LED to make it uh, light up. And you can see that I, I do have a crimper to make these kind of connectors, which slide on to this uh, pretty securely. Good to do it that way, instead of try to solder on like I usually do. And one note about these particular lights is they want 12 volts, but if you give it only 3.3 volts, it still works. What do you think about that? Why is that good? Because that means uh, the Raspberry Pi, see so here I'm, I'm doing Point. Okay, here I'm doing uh, 12 volts. If I do that, I have audio now. I bring the voltage down and 
our usage goes way down, but you still have enough to see that there's light. So now we can use the Raspberry Pi directly and we don't have to do a transistor switch thing, which just is nice if you're lazy. So here's where we are. Now, to make it blink like this and make a noise, we do need some programming. So just real quick, here's what I did. I used Proton SDK, which unlike say Unity will run on a Raspberry Pi and is free and open source. Uh, it is my own thing, by the way. So I'm very comfortable using it. And let's go ahead and show this. We have our game manager. We add all of the possible buttons. We tell it which pins to use. And then we can run it right here on Windows, even though we don't have the IO. So I can't really connect to buttons, but I can run it and it is an OpenGL app, which is being displayed on the HDMI out of the Pi uh, when we do run it there. And we can fake the GPIO here on Windows if I push the number one that, you know, pretends to be a button push. And that way I can debug the app and just kind of make sure things are working here. And then later, uh, go ahead and run it on the Pi compiled here with you can see the CMake file. We just have four source code files to compile. And then we're also using Pi GPIO, which handles talking to those pins. And on Windows, it's just a dummy that do nothing. And uh, that works fine. So moving, moving on. Our buttons are working but it's very ugly, so we need to put it in a box. I don't just wanna be like, hey, hold this. Uh, the boxes, at first, I thought I could use paper, but I mean, look at this. Would you wanna use this? Probably not, it doesn't look very durable. So instead, hit good old Amazon JP and found these wood boxes and they work just fine. Very easy to cut holes into. Cut one there, cut a little one here. You're good to go. Um, the lids kind of fall off unless you do something like this. I put on blue tack and that makes it stick together and seems fine. And there we go. This is our, uh, these little wood boxes come in different sizes. So I got a bigger one for the control box and you can look inside of it. Uh, half is just this giant speaker amp thing because I really wanted it to be loud. And I drilled some ugly holes and there you go. It works fine. And here it is in action. Let's see. You can see that flashing. And I'll turn down the vault. And then here you can see someone hits it up here. And this person tries and it doesn't work because he's locked out. See, this one's blinking up here. And that's exactly, exactly what we want. So thank you for your time. This is so easy to do. I might do more things like this. Let me know if you want to see more of these low effort post-mortem type of things. Thank you and goodbye.